<clears throat> and you still cannot fold your rope? Das ist in Europa oder warum hängt es so, so lässig da über der Schulter? Wieso? Ich lerne das Afternoon zum Mitchies gehen. Ich lebe die And I wonder why they are Michis. <laughs> like to travel here, like to travel there. Yeah. When we talked about practice, you know, I mean, I suddenly I opened my eyes. Oh, wow, well, we should do this. <laughs> we had to practice. Yeah. But we like to do the things in the world. And I think it's difficult for people who live in the world to understand the true purpose of our life or the true purpose of their lives. Because everyone around them is doing the same thing. So how can we come to the idea that there's something else? Yeah. How did the Lord Buddha came to the idea that there's something else, that he wanted to find the way out? Yeah. I mean, he was brought up in a palace and only joy, only music, dancing. Yeah. I mean, yes, of course, I'm teaching because he was supposed to become the next king. <clears throat> but otherwise, you know, just festivities, yeah, joy. Yeah. Why, why did he get interested, you know? What is outside of this palace? Yeah? What is outside of our world? Is that, is that really everything? Yeah? <clears throat> to have a family, to give birth to children, yeah? And then die. Is that all? You know what this 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 life promises us. Yeah? So the Lord Buddha was interested, you know. I mean, and he had to sneak out of the palace. Yeah. I mean, the king didn't allow it. Yeah, because he knew when he's going to see, you know, all these these suffering, all these yeah, <clears throat> all these poor people, all these sick people, yeah, and dead people people are dying, then he would ask even more questions. And that's exactly why the Lord Buddha sneaked out. And then he saw people are born, yeah? he saw young people who are born, he saw people who got sick, who were really sick, and he saw dead people. And he asked him, you know, is that what life is all about? He didn't have that in the palace because he only saw young people in the palace, yeah? except for his parents. <clears throat> so, it's, so he thought, you know, everybody was staying young and everybody has lots of fun and nobody's going to die. Yeah? And then he went out, you know, and saw the truth of the matter. Yeah? The truth that, that people are dying, that, that people are getting really sick, yeah? and that the people are born. And then he asked the question, you know, I mean, why? Why? Yeah? <clears throat> and then still there was one, one link missing, yeah, and on another excursion, then he suddenly saw a recluse, a samana, yeah. And then he wondered why why somebody, you know, I mean, <clears throat> refusing the world and going going against the streams of the world. And then he wanted to know why, why these people are going out. Yeah? And then, then he finally made his way out. Yeah? Left his wife and newborn baby behind. That's what, you know, especially Westerners cannot understand. How can you leave your wife behind? How can you leave your children behind? You know, and, but he wanted to find the truth about 
about what is life, you know, and, and why, why, you know, how to get out of Dukkha. That was his main purpose. You know? And he said, when I, once I find the truth, you know, I'm going to teach you. you know? And in the end, you know, after seven years, you know, he found the truth, you know? and then started, he didn't return instantly to the palace, but he started to teach the recluses or the samanas, yeah, who were with him at that time, or who, who were striving with him, to get to this enlightenment, to get to this unconditioned space, to get to this freedom. He was teaching them first, and only later on returned to the palace to teach <coughs> his father and mother <coughs> and his wife. And then, I mean, the interesting thing, and a lot or most of the most of the kings and princesses around his area started to ordain as monks. I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't expect, you know, that you know that that kings and and princes, yeah, I mean, have such a bad life that they have so so much dukkha that they start to ordain that they did. <clears throat> I think in the end, even his stepmother, you know, wanted to ordain as, as a nun. He refused for a while, for three times, and then he gave in. What, what is it, you know, that we don't see? What is it that we don't see, yeah? I mean, when we go, go home, yeah? I mean, when we live our life, yeah? I mean... We are working, our neighbors are working, everybody else, our relatives are working, our, our neighbors have a family, our neighbors have a car, our neighbors have a house, yeah? So we think, you know, that's it, yeah? We see people dying, yeah? We see, we see people, you know, going to the hospital. But we don't think much. We think that is, that is what is supposed to be life, yeah? And we only think, you know, when we come from the West, that this is the only way of life or that this is the only life that we have. <clears throat> and this bothered me. This bothered me when I was, was young, when I was 14. Yeah. It bothered me. Why, why is somebody born, you know, as a prince and another person is born in the ghetto of New York? Yeah? Where his father teaches him not, you know, how to do a proper job, but, you know, how to kill people or rob people. Yeah? And the other is born, you know, how to, <clears throat> to reign over, over people. Yeah? Why is that? Yeah? And Christianity doesn't give an answer to that. It says it's God will. Yeah? I mean, so why is God wills in one case just this? Yeah? I mean, the persons are supposed to be only there one, one time. Yeah? So why, why is, you know, why is it, yeah, that one person, you know, has, have, has this fortune, you know, to become a prince and another person has the fortune, not the fortune, you know, and, and is born in the ghetto, yeah? Or with, is, has the misfortune, you know, of, of his father and mother, you know, throw this kid out. And we, we hear about these stories, yeah? One year they are thrown out of their family and nobody looks after them. Of course, this happens also in Thailand, but in Thailand, you know, I mean, if, if a mother leaves her child, you know, somebody else takes care of it. They're not, they are not brought into foster homes, they are raised in other families. I mean, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <clears throat> we don't think, you know, we don't normally, you know, I mean, of course, you know, some of us, you know, adopt, adopt you know, kids, you know, if they can't have their own kids, but I mean, just to take take another kid, you know, from a relative, you know, and 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 uh, educate them and and feed them as their own. Yeah, I mean, this is something you know that shows the generosity of the Thai people. But the question, the question that bothered me and that wasn't answered, you know, in, in Christianity, why why is it, you know, that you know, a person, you know, has this mis misfortune and another has that fortune? Yeah. If we are only born once in this life, yeah? if we only come back, come, come into the, a human birth once, yeah? and then we have to spend the rest of the time, you know, if, 
if our father taught us how to kill and rob, you know, then we have to, yeah, <clears throat> and not bringing us to church, not even, you know, believing in God or Christianity, and then we have to go to hell for eternity. And the others go to heaven for eternity. How can that be? You know, there, there must be something wrong. Yeah? So I gave... So I gave up, you know, when I was 18, I gave up on Christianity because I couldn't answer the questions yeah, that I have. Yeah? It didn't have, you know, I mean, logical answers. didn't have reasons. Yeah? Why is this like this and why is that like that? Yeah? So I, I, I stood aside, you know, from religion for, for quite a while, you know, for quite a few years. Until I started started to work and, and got out got a little bit interested in yeah, spirituality. <clears throat> in spiritual communities, and at that time, yeah, I was born, you know, I mean, I was born 10 years after the, the Second World War, so, I mean, it wasn't, a, you know, the best time to be born. Yeah? I mean, we had very little to eat. There was not much to eat, and there... At that time, there, there weren't any TVs and there weren't phones, yeah? I mean, only the, some of the very rich people had a TV, yeah? <clears throat> so what, what did we do as kids, yeah? Playing out in the woods, <laughs> huh? Or reading books, yeah? And books were, at that time, very common. Huh? So later on, yeah? So, Later on, you know, I mean, I got interested, you know, I mean, you, you know, I mean, people who, who have grown up, you know, in the 70s, you know, once, once, once the people came back from India, all the spiritu spirituality swapped over from India into, into Europe, in the hippie generation and, and things like that. <clears throat> and that certainly interested me. <clears throat> so... Once, you know, I went with a friend or a colleague, you know, I actually was working at the same place, went to, to Fintom, a spiritual community in, in, uh, in, in Scotland. And we stayed there for a while and I thought, ah, oh, that's a nice community. I'm, they have some values, you know, that, that most of us have forgotten, yeah? Because already at that time, people only thought about, you know, building their houses, buying a car and having a family, yeah? And that wasn't that was my line of thought. Yeah? Also, you know, if if there wouldn't be something, you know, I probably would have gone the same same way, you know, as my brothers and sisters who all, you know, who all got married. Yeah, most of them got divorced again, <laughs> and married again, yeah, <clears throat> and divorced again. Yeah? That that wasn't that that wasn't the way. Yeah. And they were not really happy, yeah? and I wasn't really happy. Yeah? So the spiritual co community, you know, I mean, gave me gave me an idea. There's something, you know, there's something else. Yeah. And when when they had their meeting, they they had some sort of session, you know, what was called meditation. Yeah, I didn't even know what it was. Yeah? So I tried, you know, to do it, try to still my mind. Yeah? But it wasn't, of course, real meditation. Until until I met a friend, you know, who was in Bali and really did some meditation. And then she said, ah, maybe you want to visit this teacher. And then I visited this teacher. I was still was working, yeah. I was quite happy in the first three years. I was a scientist, yeah. Had enough money, yeah? Had a blended job. Yeah? Nobody pressed me to, to get any results, yeah. <clears throat> so what could I wish more for? But I still was dissatisfied with my life. There was some dissatisfaction constantly lacking at my heart, yeah? Constantly lacking, yeah? Uh, something, something, something is, something is not right, yeah? <clears throat> so I went to the, see this meditation teacher and he was giving a course. So I did a 10, ten days meditation course. And then within this 10 day meditation course, the teacher yeah, was a former bhikkhu was a former monk who studied with Mahesi Sayadaw in Burma and then lived for nine years as a monk in Thailand. 
So he was a Theravada, he used to be a Theravada monk, but because, I mean, at that time, you know, in the 60s, you couldn't live as a monk in Germany, as a Buddhist monk. Buddhism was still, you know, I mean, in the, let's say, in the, in the wood area, <laughs> not even the iron area, <laughs> wood area, you know, in, in, in Europe. So he disrobed, you know, and, and just, you know, was, was a meditation teacher. But he was teaching the, the right thing. He was teaching anapanasati, yeah? concentration on the breath, being mindful of the breath at the tip of the nose. Yeah? And he was also a scholar, so he read a lot of the, the Buddha's teaching. And in, in the evening he gave us a lecture. Yeah? And that sounded... That sounded, you know, whatever he said, that sounded really logical and re reasonable to me. And, I mean, if you remember, I was a scientist, and as a scientist, you know, you have to be quite logical and reasonable. I mean, you have to find, <coughs> what they say in Tehe Pon, cause and effect, yeah? And, I mean, whatever you thought had, you know, there was a cause and there was an effect, yeah? So, I mean, that, that, really, that really appealed to my heart. So I started to med meditate every day. Still was working, yeah? Meditated in the morning before I went to work, meditated after, after I came back from work, and if I had more time, you know, maybe, maybe half an hour before I went to bed. On the weekends where I didn't have any job to do, I was meditating three, four hours a day. <clears throat> And that lasted for, for two or three years. Mm -hmm. Until you know, my, my meditation practice became so stable and so solid that I decided, you know, the happiness that I find in meditation is more than I could have found, you know, through anything. And I, I had all the opportunities in life, yeah? Like, People pursue this and pursue that, you know, I could pursue it if I wanted to, yeah. But that didn't, that didn't give me the satisfaction that meditation practice gave me. Yeah? And so I decided to, to stop working, you know, and give the things away that I had and, and just, you know, went into homelessness. Yeah? Trying to search, you know, for, for a place where I can stay. <clears throat> So I went to England, yeah, where, where that teacher, I mean, he, he moved to England where this teacher was staying yeah, and, and stayed there for, for four months and that was the best time I ever had. Yeah. I mean, I was practicing from, from six o'clock in the morning to three o'clock in the night. Yeah. Just practicing, I wasn't interested in anything, I just wanted, yeah, just like in my, in my research, you know, I was interested, you know, finding the cause, yeah, uh, and finding solution, yeah? so I was interested in finding the cause you know, of all this dukkha. Yeah? <clears throat> I wasn't interested about the world. I wasn't interested. You know, I just wanted to interest, you know, to find out. Yeah? And maybe that is the drive that a lot of people are missing. Yeah? Find, yeah, being interested to find the cause of our dukkha, to find the cause. Yeah? <clears throat> But I couldn't stay there forever because, I mean, a meditation center lives on the donation or lives on, you know, charges, charges for people who stay there. So, I mean, sooner or later my, my money would be gone, you know, and, and I said, I need to find a better place. In England there was uh, the English Sangha of, the, of, of Wat Banana Chat or Achan Sumedho, so I went there for a year. But then I found out that, that, the, that the monks there are busy doing this and busy doing that. So, I mean, that wasn't the place for me because I wanted to find a place where I can wholeheartedly practice 24 hours a day. <clears throat> so, after a year left, yeah, and went to, to, to Germany because I thought, you know, there are some interesting people. And, I mean, I met Ayakima before and she invited me to come to the Buddha house. And then I stayed there for two years, but and then I, I realized I had to work there as well. I, I, did, I didn't have, I had only one or two hours a day, you know, for practice. I mean, that's what, 
I didn't go into homelessness just to work yeah, or to serve others. I, I, I went into homeless. I went into homelessness to, you know, to, to get to, to, to the basic, yeah, to, to get to the source of all this dukkha or discontent. Yeah? And so I, I, I stopped there yeah, and decided, yeah, okay, now I have to go to Thailand because I knew before I read a book from Tanacha Mahabo, yeah, it was called Straight from the Heart. Somebody, a teacher there, gave me and said, maybe this book interests me. Yeah? And I read this book, you know, and I knew this person knows the truth. I mean, he knows the whole truth. I don't know how I knew it, but I, I just knew it. And if you want to know the truth, you have to visit that person. And that was Lungta Mahabo or Tanacha Mahabo. So, I mean, after my not so successful journey in, in the West, be it, England, be it in England or in Germany, trying to find, you know, some teacher who know the path to the end of Dukkha, I, I finally had to, you know, to, bite, to bite into the hard bread, you know, and, and go to Thailand. Because Thailand, I mean, it is, it's a different country. It's a different, it's a different culture. And it's a different language. They don't speak English. <laughs> so, I mean, all these things, you know, I mean, were putting me off for a while, and that's why I was looking in, in Europe for, you know, for, for proper meditation teachers. But I couldn't find them. None of them, you know. I mean, I asked the question, how to overcome greed and hate? Yeah? Because that was bothering most. Yeah? I mean, the hate that come up or the greed that came up, you know, how to overcome it? Yeah? And all what they did, you know, were telling me, just let it go. I said, my heart instantly reacted, you can't let that go. Yeah? I mean, it all constantly comes back. Yeah? How can you let that go? Even if you let that go for... for for 10 years or 15 years, huh, <clears throat> it will still come back. You can't, you can't eradicate it like this. And so then finally I came to Thailand, you know, came to, to the monastery of Lungta Mahabur. And uh, I came there in the afternoon. I didn't see him that day, but I saw him on the next day. Yeah? And then I instantly knew I had found my father and my mother. Now I'm here at the place where I always where my heart belongs, <clears throat> that I always have dreamed of. And then you know, I don't know, maybe in, in one or two weeks, you know, I mean, he explained. Yeah? People, yeah, you know, people talk of letting go. Yeah? That's impossible to let go. Yeah. I mean, tell an aunt, you know, he, he used that example, tell an aunt that is on the, on the roof, you know, or on, on, on the ceiling and wants to go to the floor, all what it needs to do is let go. I mean, the ants have, don't have bones, so I mean, they will, you know, they will survive just letting go, yeah, and go to the floor. But he said, you know, the ants don't know that. They don't know the command let go. They only know how to do one step ahead. And if they go in the right direction and go down, you know, and then they are at the floor. They can't let go. And so can't our heart. Our heart can't let go. <clears throat> but there are ways how to show the heart that what it longs to is not sufficient or is a lot of dukkha, that we attach to the wrong thing. Yeah? And if you start to investigate these things that the heart attaches to, I mean, also the other things will go. Huh? So, investigation of the body yeah, was that final. That was, was that final answer. You know how to get rid of greed and hate, yeah? because greed and ra hate are stored or rooted in the body. Once you destroy, you know, the <coughs> our illusion about the body, we don't have to destroy the body. I mean, that's useless. But the illusion that we have about the body, that it's something nice, that it's something comfortable, that it's something amazing, yeah? Once we destroy this illusion about the body, then we also will get rid of greed and hate. Because greed and hate, you know, are, are all within the realm of this body. And once, once we see that the body is you know, just a body, yeah? just like we see the car is just a car, yeah? we don't have to cry when it, when it goes, yeah? <clears throat> 
And we, we don't have to wish for a new car. Yeah? Once we see it, yeah, I mean, we, we, we will get rid of greed and hate. Yeah? The practice, I mean, the practice, I don't know how I did it, yeah? Because everybody was against me. Yeah? I mean, at that time, there wasn't the Dalai Lama who came, you know, and taught about the West, about Buddhism, yeah? And with his friendly and, and peaceful, enlightened face, you know, I made the people aware that, you know, this is not a bad sect, yeah? What the people in the 70s and 80s thought, yeah? Or even still 90s, even 2000, I mean, <clears throat> when I came back the first, first, first time to Germany, you know, they all called me Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare and so on, you know, I mean, you're called names, yeah? When, when you're dressed up as a monk like that. So it was rather difficult, yeah. But there was something, you know, that within my heart that told me there is something, you know, that is much more valuable than anything that you can find within this world, yeah. And the first experience after one and a half years, yeah, and don't think, you know, I mean, it is easy, yeah. I mean, it is very difficult. I mean, think about, you know, your worldly life, yeah. Before you get up, yeah, before you do anything, I mean, you start with one hour of meditation. And then when, when you're finished with your work, you know, I mean, you don't sit down and drink coffee and eat something. Yeah, but you first make your meditation before you eat and drink something. Yeah? Or before you go to sleep, make another meditation or make a reflection. Yeah? I mean, these things came, came to me probably because of practice in the previous life. So, I mean... Could have been a, could have been a reason, but the scientific you know the scientific education you know to find cause yeah to find the causes i mean is is certainly a very good motive it's certainly a good interest you know to dig deeper and deeper and deeper and to overcome all the hindrances yeah? <clears throat> and that's probably you know that is probably also due to the area we were born in, or to the time that we were born in, yeah? At that time, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't much entertainment, yeah? I mean, the older, the, the older ones of you know it. I mean, maybe one, one in the village has a, had a TV set, yeah? Maybe one in the village had a phone, or, the, or sooner or later, you know, in the 70s already was better, you know? I mean, people had one phone in their home, but, you know, that phone was there, yeah? If the people weren't there, nobody, you know, could call them. Yeah? <clears throat> so there wasn't much to do. There wasn't much to entertain ourselves, except for, you know, once in a while, once a month, you know, a new movie that was playing in the theaters. Yeah? <clears throat> so we had to, to deal with ourselves all day long, more or less, yeah? We have to think, we were thinking about it, what is, you know, I mean, for, for me it was easier, I mean, what is the purpose of our life, yeah? What is this universe all about, yeah? These were the questions that I had, you know, already when I was 14. Yeah? When I just, you know, got confirmed in the, in the Christian or in, in the Protestant religion, yeah? That's where normally you have it at 14. Question, what, what is this life about? Why are, we, why are we born? Why are we born, you know? I mean, I was lucky to be born in this family. Other people weren't that lucky, yeah? They were born in another family where their father or the mother beat them up, yeah? So, I mean, why I was born there, you know? And why are the others are born there, you know? What did they do wrong, yeah? What is the cause, you know? And once I came into contact with Buddhism, you know, I mean, it all, it all made sense. Suddenly, you know, I mean, how you can say, you know, I mean, the, the lids of the, the window, windows opened up, you know, and, and suddenly you could see. Or in German we say, you know, suddenly, you know, the, the, the penny dropped. Yeah? Ah, that's it. Yeah? <clears throat> you have a short life if you kill other people, I mean. Just need to read a little bit about the Buddha's teaching and about uh, the, the karma that he taught. Yeah, people you know who are very generous get very rich. People who serve others and don't think about themselves get beautiful. And people you know who take other people's life, yeah, first go to hell and when, once they come back as human beings, will have a short life. Uh huh. So yeah, 
And if you if you are if you are having yeah, <clears throat> if you are born in a good family, that means that you have taken care of your kids, you know, in previous lives. Yeah. And if you have never taken care of, you know, if you throw throw your kids out, yeah, in your previous lives, yeah, or or made an abortion, you know, even that, yeah, then in this life you don't get any children, or you are born as a kid, you know, who who has no father and no mother. So suddenly things, you know, fell into place, made sense. Karma is, is one thing uh, that that makes you know makes it, makes most sense, you know. I mean, especially as a scientist, yeah? it explains everything. If you do this, this will happen. If you do that, that will happen. And yet it's the same thing, you know, with the the path that the Lord Buddha taught us, the path that leads to the end of dukkha. If you do this, yeah. I mean, for instance, if you just concentrate on the tip of the nose and observe the breath at the tip of the nose, if it comes in or goes out, if it is fast or if it is shallow, I mean, we will reach a state of satisfaction, of content. You just have to do it and you know that it is true. Hmm? And the more you follow the, the, the description or you follow the path of the Lord Buddha, the more that you see how true he is, yeah? Whatever he says you should do, and if you do it wholeheartedly, I mean, that is my conviction, or that was my conviction in the beginning was just starting the samadhi. But then it went over, you know, in, into investigation. If you understand, you know, if you reflect or if you investigate this or that, yeah? for instance, what is pain, what is fear, and these things, yeah? I mean, they fall into place, yeah? <clears throat> you will understand them. So whatever the Lord Buddha taught, you know, I mean, when I practice it, you know, according to the teaching of the Lord Buddha, not according to my ideas, what I had, yeah? because in the beginning I had no ideas. I wasn't really interested in reading any books. Yeah, I was interested in practice, you know, experience. Yeah? And the more you, you trust the Lord Buddha, yeah? until you trust him one hundred percent. And then you see, you see a disciple like Lungta Mahabho, and, and you see, you know, he lived the way of the Lord Buddha. He went the, all the path, you know, that the Lord Buddha described. I mean, how can you not trust him? You know? <clears throat> and that, that is something, you know, we probably, a lot of people probably miss, yeah. I mean, a, a teacher, I mean, a teacher that shows that these things that he's talking about, yeah, are possible, yeah? are makeable, are doable, yeah? if you just would follow the path that you described. Hmm? Not many people have these kind of teachers. And there are not many, many of these arahants in Thailand that still are living anymore. There are still a few, yeah? and they have lots of, they have lots of students. Yeah? But it will be more and more difficult. Yeah? And it is And it will be more and more difficult because the world is so so much so full of entertainment where we can distract ourselves from the dukkha, from the real from the real source, from the first noble truth. Just like the Lord Buddha, when he was when he still was a prince, yeah, distracted himself with all these dancing and music, you know, and women, you know, and the young people, and all these plays and games, you know, in the palace from the truth of Dukkha, until he went out and saw, ah, there is. Yeah? So with our entertainments, with our smartphones, with our TV, with our internet, I mean, how can we know that there is Dukkha? I mean, when we are hungry, we just eat something. When we are thirsty, we just drink something. So, I mean, we evade Dukkha all the time. So we evade the first noble truth. And if you don't understand the first noble truth, And the second noble truth, the origin of Dukkha, the desire to become something, the desire to have something, the desire to be something, yeah, or be somebody, hmm, or not the desire to be somebody, and so on. And not to have the desire for this, and not to have, yeah, not to want this. Yeah? It's just the opposite. Yeah? If you don't understand the second noble truth, I mean, then what makes us go out? Huh? There's no way. We just live and live and live until, until the last breath, you know, and then we go into the next life. And then start the same way out, yeah? 
I mean, we, 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 we are born, you know, we, we educate this body or we train this body for 15 or 15 years. You know, some, in some ages it is, uh, it's faster, you know, you train it only for 10 years, yeah. But yeah, we, we do a lot of, of training in school. I mean, 100 years ago school was very short. So, I mean, people, you know, with 14, you know, or even 12, you know, they are already could marry, yeah, and have children with 12. Now we think about 12, it's not even, yeah. <clears throat> now we need for our education, I mean, 16 years or, you know, when you go to university, 24 years until we're finished. Yeah? So in the next life we do the same thing again, yeah. And then, then we build a family, you know, have, have kids, you know, build a house, you know, and so on. And then die again and still don't know the reason why we are born. And still don't know the reason, yeah? Why are the things happening to us that, that do happen to us, yeah? We don't mind the, 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 the comfortable things, you know, that happen to us, but we do mind, you know, in the misfortunes that we call misfortunes that happen to us, yeah? Oh, this government, oh, this neighbor, you know? I mean, he constantly, yeah, aggravates me, yeah? Why is this happening to us? I mean, that is, and that is where the scientist mind comes in. He asks the question, what the hell is going on there? Yeah. I mean, that was, that was my only question, you know, even when I was still was working. What the hell is going on there? Huh? I mean, why are you doing the things that you're doing? Who told you so? I mean, what, what kind of voice is that? Yeah? Huh? Who asks this question? And I mean, once in a while, you know, every one of us yeah, has asked the question, why am I here? But this question was answered, you know, instantly by drinking something or eating something, yeah? <laughs> and we forgot it. Yeah? Why are we here in this place? Yeah? What is the purpose of our life? Yeah? And what the hell is going on? Who tells me to do this? Who tells me to like this? Who tells me not to like this? Yeah? So a keen interest in, in getting to the ground of things, yeah? to the cause, yeah? I mean, it's, it's really essential in our practice. And that spurts our motive to practice really hard, yeah? Without, you know, without facing, you know, without, you know, without uh, going back, yeah? On dukkha, you know, dukkha vedana, I mean, painful feelings, or this hindrance or that hindrance, yeah? It just makes us go through, yeah? Just like a soldier who has no, I mean, he has no way, you know, if the lieutenant tells him go there, you know, he has to go there, no matter if it is if it is marsh, or if it is, you know, thick woods, you know, if it is thorns or thumbles, yeah, I mean, or if there are enemies in front of him, he has to go. Yeah? And that is the kind, kind of, that is the kind of motive we need, you know, for our practice in order to become successful. Yeah? Just to go through whatever comes up in front of, whatever we see, yeah, whatever comes up on the screen, yeah, on our eye screen, yeah, in front of, that is what, what we are going to tackle. We are not going to deviate from our root, yeah? It, it needs a lot of German, you know, blood in you <laughs> to do this, yeah? But my father was very German and very strict, yeah? I mean, if he didn't do anything, you know, 100%, I mean, he wouldn't accept it. He said, do it, you know, properly, yeah? Don't give me half-hearted results, yeah? If you do something, do it properly. Of course, you know, children resent this kind of father, yeah? But in the end, you know, when you're 20 or 24, I mean, you find some really value in this teaching, yeah? <clears throat> and that's what, what I found, yeah? My brothers and sisters, not so much. Yeah? They still resent, yeah? Except for my younger sister. They still resent my strict father. But he was good in training, yeah? Training in sati. I mean, everybody needs sati. I mean, he was a mechanical engineer, I was an electrical engineer, or a computer engineer later on, yeah? So, I mean, he was doing things. And then he had sharp eyes, yeah? Very sharp eyes. He saw everything, you know? We couldn't hide anything from him. If he made a mistake, he instantly saw it. And he just needed to come back from, from his work, you know, and he saw this, boom! Who did that? <laughs> Bush. <laughs> And he already knew, you know, I mean, I had five brothers and sisters, you know, I mean, he already probably knew who was doing it, yeah, because he knew the character of these children. 
So he was quite strict, yeah, I mean, but also, you know, quite efficient in his training. Yeah? I mean, the thing that, that you don't forget, you know, as a child is, yeah? I mean, if you're, if you're supposed to do a task, you know, that normally adults start, yeah? He told, you know, he told me as a 15-year-old, okay, I show you once. You better pay attention because I only do it for you once and you better have attention on it because next time you have to do it on your own. Yeah? And that, you know, I mean, and he didn't do it the second time. He said, I showed you last year, so you know how to do it. Huh? That's quite a, quite a strict training, isn't it? <clears throat> and then you had to be alert, yeah? I mean, whenever he showed you something, you, you better be alert, you know, to know how, how is it done, yeah? And that is the kind of sati that we need in our practice. So, I mean, I had this fortune, you know, to be trained, first of all, by, by my father, and then, you know, by, by my second father, yeah? I mean, he was even stricter. He even had better eyes than my father, yeah? My spiritual father, Lungta Mahabur. Even so more, you know, I mean, you didn't have to do anything, you know. If you just did something wrong, I mean, he was in the, on the back of you, yeah? yeah. For three weeks you didn't see him, yeah? And then you did something wrong and suddenly he was behind you. And, you know, pointing the finger. What did you do? Why did you do it? You know, but, yeah. No? That's a good training. Yeah? But people tend to resent Nowadays, you know, people want to be, ah, you're good, you know, you're good, you know, I don't worry too much, you know, next time will be better and so on. I mean, he was not that kind of person. He was really strict, yeah? You do it, do it properly, yeah? And there's no second time, yeah? <clears throat> this is kind of, it's kind of tough training, And it, it is difficult to imagine for, for most of us, I mean, especially the younger generation that comes from the West. I mean, there's not much training in it. I know how my brothers and sisters taught their kids, yeah? Very different from, from what my parents taught them, yeah? Ah, oh, yeah, understanding, 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 yeah? I mean, who, what do they understand, you know? Oh, the kids need this, the kids need that, you know? And freedom, yeah? And so on. And in the end, you know, I mean, they, they become unconcentrated. They don't know. They don't know cause and effect. No? <clears throat> and then with all this entertainment function, yeah? I mean, how can we have sati for five minutes, you know, if you're constantly, you know, watching, watching the internet or watching our smartphone or, or listening to this or listening to that or, or talking to this person or talking to that person? We never know what is going on in our heart. And the heart, you know, heart is the cause for all the problems. Eh? I mean, if we just would look into the heart, I mean, we would see things arise. We would see, you know, the intention for a thought becomes before the thought comes. Eh? That's where all the things are born, in our heart. Eh? And that's why it always points to the heart. Eh? That's where things are born. Our anger is born there, our greed is born there, huh? our satisfaction is born there, our dissatisfaction is born there. It's every born there, that's why always it points down to the heart. So, instead of going outwards, you know, we go inward. And that is the training of the lay people who come here to this monastery and the training of the monk. Go inside, not go outside. What is going on there, what is going on there, doesn't really interest us. What is going on in my heart? What kind of reaction do I have to this? Yeah? <clears throat> what kind of reaction do I have to the food that is presented today? What, I, what kind of reaction do I have to the people? Yeah? To the others? Yeah? I mean, we are few, so I mean, there's, there, there's, not, there's not much distraction. And everybody has his own kuti, everybody has its own place, there's, so there's not much distraction. Yeah? I mean, so put, put your effort into your practice, yeah? It's not easy, I mean, from my point of view, it's not easy, but, you know, if you have the drive, yeah, you, can, you can master any kind of hindrances that come up. Yeah? If you have to 
if you have the drive to understand what the hell is going on, just this question, you know, always, yeah, popped up in my mind constantly. What the hell is going on? Why are you doing this? Yeah? What are the results of doing this? These questions constantly pop up, whatever you, whatever I was doing. Yeah? What? Why are you looking now left? Yeah? What do you see? I mean, these things come up yeah? through the training, through the training of sati, through the training of awareness. Yeah? Hmm? Where do you put, you know, when I was walking through Hamburg, I was walking in Hamburg, when I was walking through Hamburg, you know, I just wanted, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't do walking meditation in your, in your little 36-foot apartment, square, square meter apartment, yeah? So I had to do walking meditation outside, but, you know, there are all these street signs and things like that, you know, there are all these windows, yeah? So, I mean, most of people just then go window shopping, yeah? But I tried, you know, to put my attention, you know, just in front of my feet, yeah, one meter, you know, and, and, and then I saw, you know, I mean, my eyes went up, so instantly the question, came, why, did, why, did, why did your eyes go up, huh? Ah, I just was reading, yeah, and what does this reading bring you? Huh? Just garbage in, yeah, <clears throat> and so on. If you look left, you know, what is there, yeah? If you look right, you know, what is there? Constantly aware of the movements, yeah? and at that time in the movements of the body. Yeah? I wasn't yet able to, to watch the movements of the heart, but the movements of the body are indication for the movements of the heart. Yeah? <clears throat> and this kind of this kind yeah, of self-awareness, what we are doing, what we are, why we are doing it, and what kind of results is doing it, I mean we need that. Otherwise we won't get any any kind of results on the practice, in our practice. You understand that, huh? So, I think it is enough for today, yeah? It was a little bit different talk, yeah? I mean, if I could do it, you know, I was working for... What was it? 89, I was taking up practice. Until 91, for two and a half years. I was working and meditating every day without faith. Yeah? And that is, that is the kind of <coughs> determination that you need, that kind of determination you need. No matter what is happening. Yeah? I mean, if I had to take a plane to go, for instance, to Eindhoven you know, or to, to Holland or, or to Switzerland to, to uh, uh, attend a meeting, then I would just wake, you know, if the plane was going at six o'clock, I would wake up at four o'clock. Yeah? If I just went to work, then I would wake up at six o'clock and do my hour of meditation until seven o'clock before I was eating and then going to work. Yeah? No matter what. Yeah? There was nothing, you know, that could deter me from my practice. And that is the kind of determination that every one of you needs if you want to get some results. Yeah? Not, yeah? oh, no, 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 I'm too tired. Yeah? That, that, doesn't, that doesn't work. Yeah? That, that wasn't in my... In, how, how do you say? What shots? Uh, what is it in English? Huh? What capital? Yeah. That wasn't in my vocabulary. Yeah. <clears throat> if I determined you know to practice, then I did it. Yeah. One hour before, yeah? before the work, before I did anything. Yeah. Not even washing my face, because I mean, the moment you wash your face and brush your teeth, I mean, you get ideas what to do. Yeah? Just get straight out of bed, you know, and then, and then sit, yeah? And get the mind still. And that's the same thing, you know? When you come back from work or from, from any kind of you know, <coughs> occupation, the first thing is you sit and let everything out. Let just let it go, yeah? because otherwise these thoughts, you know, all your memories, you know, keep on churning, 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 you know, and and determine, you know, your evening. Yeah? So get it out, yeah. Get the mind completely still, yeah, and then reflect. And and then after that, I normally reflected about what happened, you know, during that day until that time, yeah? and a lot of things became very clear. Huh? This it did. Why did you do it? And then you saw also the results. See? The results? Yeah. But not judging that it was good or bad, yeah. But just knowing, yeah. 
what you did, why you did it. Yeah? Sometimes you didn't know why you did it. Yeah? Because it was, there was a long, long time in between. Yeah? Then I just told myself, okay, tomorrow, when the situation appears again, you, you're more, more aware. Yeah? And then it takes, you know, one week, two weeks, one month, two months, three months, you know, until you get this situation, you know, it happens very often in your life, more clear and more clear, until you really understand what is the cause of the problem. But you have to have some, some patience. And people nowadays don't have this kind of patience. They want, you know, they want to look at one thing and instantly understand it. Yeah? Well, if, if, if they have a little bit of patience, they are at least after three times they want to understand it. No, you need a lot of patience. Yeah? You need to look at it, you need to look at it until, you know, until the heart understands, not until the mind understands. That fooled me in the beginning. Yeah? Because after looking three times, you know, ah, yeah, because of this. And then suddenly my heart said, no, you have to look again. That's not the real reason. Okay, understood? Huh? อมตะให้พูดน้อยนะ <laughs> 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 <clears throat> Correct them when they when they speak Thai. Sometimes, yeah. Thai is not easy. You have to have good ears, yeah. But if you have such a heavy Swiss accent, you know, I mean, it is very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> The advantage of, of my upbringing was my mother was a, German, a teacher for German. She did not allow any dialect spoken in, <laughs> in her house. So, I mean, I was brought up with, with high German and that, that has very little accent. Yeah? So, I mean, it is easier for, for this, to learn other languages. 